All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a special treat here today. You might have seen him in a clip floating around on social media at a protest giving giving a speech about uh, Black Lives Matter and Antifa. He's a member of the Boogaloo Boys. You might have also seen him on the Jimmy Dore Show. He's definitely been making the rounds on the internet. Please welcome to the show Magnus Panvidia. Am I saying your name right there, Magnus? Yeah. Yeah, you got it right. Okay. So, Magnus, uh, you know, some, some people may have already seen you. Uh, a lot of us indie media try to work together, so some people may already know who you are. But for anyone who might not know, uh, tell us a little bit about you. Um, I, I understand you're a member of, of the Boogaloo Boys, and, and I've done a little research, but you're, you're the guy that's in the, in the group, so I want to let you explain, you know, what, what are you about? What do you stand for? What does the Boogaloo Boys stand for? And, and what are your goals? What do you want to see take place in the country? Yeah, so uh, I've just been a lifelong activist for you know, a bunch of different causes, environmental activist, anti-government activist, going all the way back, back to like the days of Anonymous and everything and all the things that went around with the Million Mass March and a bunch of stuff like that. And then recently in the last year, I got hooked up with the Boogaloo Boys. And what we've been kind of trying to do is we're sort of a non-political anti-government kind of faction. Like we're not really right or left and we're not really, you know, we don't have any like pet projects we're trying trying to achieve. What we're, what we're broadly focused on, what we broadly hope to accomplish is opposition to the current federal government and how out of control and unreliable and unaccountable it's become in almost every factor of our lives. And particularly just trying to unite all these tribes because there's so many groups that think everything the government's doing is completely wrong, but we're all kind of in our own little pockets and bubbles. We don't really work together. We don't really organize together. And particularly over the last four years of Trump, there's been more infighting between anti-government factions than there has been between anti-government factions and the government itself, which is really, you know, not good. So we're, we've kind of just been running around trying to get everybody on the same page and using our, our, our middle ground to kind of bridge gaps between these groups, and get them to work together. Yeah, uh, and, and I, I completely respect that. Um, so, so to give you a little bit about me, you know, because I know we've kind of talked on social media, but I'm kind of an oddball. So I, I'm from South Carolina, which you know, very, very red state, but I'm independent. Um, personally, I think that both of the parties have failed us. I think we have an issue right now with a two-party duopoly in this country, and that we we need another solution. And I think you kind of hit a nail on the head right there. You brought up that there's a lot of infighting in a lot of these factions. Uh, and, and, and I don't know if you're familiar with Jesse Ventura or not, but as he infamously said when he was the independent governor of Minnesota, when he tried to bring the independents together, it was almost like trying to herd cats. Um, I, I'm curious what your take is on, on why there's so much infighting. But me personally, I, I feel like it's got a lot to do between the two parties and our mainstream media. They, they figured out with their propaganda strategy, they pit you against each other and more people seem to want to vote now out of a fear of the other side. And then politicians are able to capitalize on that fear, run on that fear and never really have to propose or follow through on any of their promises or solutions, assuming that they gave us any. Um, and I think that's a massive problem in our country. And I feel like that's why there's so much infighting between anyone, right, left, independent, libertarian, Green Party, is that they, they've pitted everyone against each other that no one wants to talk. Uh, to talk. Everyone just wants to argue and fight nowadays. What, what do you say to that? Yeah, I've, I've always had like one of my go-to lines I always say is the, uh, the only difference between a right-wing libertarian and a left-wing libertarian is your news sources because you can, you can tell with a lot of people that even though they might be independent they're getting a lot of their information from just one side of the spectrum and a lot of their arguments are based on that side of the spectrum and a lot of times when you kind of break down and get people to accept that like mo most most media is disingenuous most people are lying to you even you know some of your favorite content creators might have been duped you, you know they might not be doing it intentionally but they might be being fed information in a particular way to make you fear your neighbor more than you fear the government and definitely with like the two parties we, you know, we saw today that there was a hundred you know, a hundred to zero unanimous vote in the senate to defend not defund the police and all the democrats voted on on that including bernie sanders so it's yeah. kind of that whole thing where if if, if, a, if a business just starts offering you a garbage product and you continue to buy that 
garbage product, then they have no reason to offer you anything better. And that's kind of what the two parties are. They, they've gotten it to where people will literally vote for a crazy old white guy versus crazy old white guy. And, yeah. you know, where do we go from here? How, 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 how awful is going to be the next set of president candidates? You know, if we've, if we've shown the world and the establishment that we're willing to accept this garbage, then what's the next garbage to come, you know? Yeah, you, you bring up a very good point. And months ago, uh, way back before we even had uh, Joe Biden nominated as the Democratic uh, candidate, I told a lot of people, you know, that, that floated the idea of, well, we just need to get Trump out of office. I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough, but do we need to replace him with someone who gave us Donald Trump in the first place? Because to me, Joe Biden was the type of politician that, that made this fester in the country. You know, uh, the, and it's not just on the Democrat side. I mean, we, we can talk people like George Bush, too. You know, it, it's that ilk. It's that type of that party. They gave us this resentment. They gave us this, this hurt in the country, and that led to a President Donald Trump. And so if you get rid of Donald Trump and you put the problem back in as his replacement, logic is going to stand. You're going to get another form, some kind of variation of Donald Trump. Now, I know how heavily they attacked the New York. Yeah, and, 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 this is a, and this is a guy from New York, okay? We all know how heavily he was attacked as being this massive racist. What worries me is, is because most of the South are red. Right, that that's that's Republican uh, ball game. Okay, what's to say that the next Donald Trump doesn't come from South Carolina or Arkansas or Alabama or something, and and, and then that's just going to take the the racist rhetoric stuff because everybody knows people stereotype the South overall as being racist territory. It's it, it, it's a stereotype that nags us. So if his replacement comes from this area of the country sounds like I do, has this southern twang to his voice, that's only going to make things that much worse, and the mainstream media is going to run with it even farther. It's going to cause more division, more tension, and more more fighting in our country. So putting putting the cancer back into the system isn't the solution. You know, uh, it was the solution for the military-industrial complex, as we've seen with the fact that Biden does not want to pull out of Afghanistan now. It was the solution for, for Wall Street because now you've had the issue with Wall Street bets. You've had people who took money from Citadel who were briefing him on what took place. So, I mean, you, know, I mean, you, you, you tell me if you find any disagreement with that, but th this next four years is going to be very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, no, like we 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 went back to Obama, which was Bush two two point oh, who was Clinton two point oh, who was Bush you know senior two point oh, like this this is all you know going back from like Reagan and even maybe maybe further of this exact same line of thought and a lot of times even like the same people when you talk about like people like Henry Kissinger, yeah, like that's Reagan days and he's currently advising the president, so it's like, you know, we we have gone on just back to the status quo and I, I've I've often say that. Like people run around and say Trump was Hitler, where I often say Trump is Kaiser Wilhelm. He's he's in, he's inherited this decaying empire that's falling apart. He's incompetent. He don't doesn't know what's going on. And continuing this collapse is going to get us the American Hitler. You're going to get the the right wing kind of feeling so disenfranchised and insular that they're after probably you know four, eight years of Biden. I'm just going to assume they're going to be so annoyed and so sick of it. And if there's no unity between left and right they're going to view it as i have to go my own way and they will probably elect some insane ultra nationalist like you know america red white and blue all the way down to his blood kind of person and then you know everything we experienced under trump will be 300 times worse which is, you know another reason why i'm trying to like say like hey you know don't left left wing don't get so disenfranchised that you you elect a stalin and right wing don't get so disenfranchised you elect to hitler like let's come together here and solve this problem <laughs> You know, yeah, I, I I completely agree, and you know, I, I don't know if if you're familiar with this, but this is definitely a, a ticket that me and some other people are, are trying to really heavily push, and that's possibly looking at someone like a Mosh Gabbard. You know what I mean? Um, I, I personally I like Tulsi Gabbard a lot. I think Justin Amash did pretty good. Uh, but if they were on the Libertarian ticket, that seems to be why most people put Amash at the top because he's got the the more ties to the Libertarian Party. Um, I'm fine with it being Gabbard Amash, personally. Uh, I would take either one. But I, I want to ask you, because 
do you think that when we talk about how to change politics, it seems like for any of these third parties, if we are going to get unity, whether it be through the Libertarian Party, the Green Party, or a movement for a People's Party, um, the biggest flaw that I, I think is in the in the structure right now is that there seems to be all this focus on the presidency. I don't see nearly enough focus on the Senate, the Congress, or the state legislatures. And I, I look at it like this. Say we got the president replaced, and he's got nothing but Democrats and Republicans in the House and the Senate. He's a city, he or she is going to be a sitting duck because they are going to gridlock them to death. And unfortunately, I, from what I've observed, most of the country doesn't dig deep enough into it to understand who's really causing the problems, and they blame the figurehead. You know, uh, it, it could be Nancy Pelosi stalling, you know, stimulus checks. But if Trump's the president and he's not getting them out, we're going to say Trump's not handling it properly. You know what I mean? So if they get that office and then the Democrats and Republicans gridlock them, I think that the problem there is going to be most Americans are going to say, okay, we put this third party president in and look what they're doing. We're getting nothing out of this. So do you think that if we're going to really make this change, if we can win at the ballot box, do you believe that we need to put a lot more effort into the Senate and the Congress? Do you think we need to do a 50-50, you know, between the president and the, and the uh, Capitol Hill? How do you think we need to go about that? Because I think we need to put a lot more yeah, focus I, into that. Yeah, like like, like I've said in other places, I, I have my doubts on electoral politics just for the fact that the amount of effort to put in what I'm about to describe is going to be huge and people are really going to have to get involved and it's kind of like the last minute Hail Mary. So if you want that, then you need to really work on it. But definitely just like our whole political system in America has just revolved around the presidency since the end of Bush. Like the average, you know, the average person has no idea who their mayor is. They have no idea who their, you know, their ward manager is. They have no idea who's on their city council, but they'll obsess over the presidency and talk about the presidency all the time to yeah. where definitely like in third parties, I no, because I speak to I speak to Spike Cohen, you know, pretty regularly, and he's, he was the VP for the Libertarian Party this last run of focusing on just taking over local stuff immediately, because a lot of the power flows up from there, and people really have to get involved with that, and just like go up to people and be like, hey, you know, like I like like what you're doing. Don't run under a Democratic ticket. If you don't run under a Democratic ticket or Republican, you know, whatever it is, then I'll vote for you, and you, you know, be aware of their policies and stuff like that, because my my whole kind of general political thought philosophy is is radical decentralism, where I really want very, very small autonomous communities that are almost 100% representative of the community that they're in. And we have the exact opposite of that. We have this giant federal republic that almost every decision that's affecting your life is coming from some person in Washington because people are so tuned out of their local politics. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, and... and just to kind of touch on what you're talking about there, that that brings up some points that I've made. And so this is where, you know, some of my counterparts in indie media, um, I, I'm friends with a lot of people like uh, Frank Analysis, for example, right? A little, little more on the on the left than, than, than I am. But, you know, uh, the minimum wage thing, for example, and that's kind of been my argument. It's not that I want to see people have a starvation wage. I think the issue with like a federal minimum wage, what you just brought up with the federal government making all this stuff, Different states, different towns, different communities are going to have different costs of living. $15 an hour could be, you know, a giant increase that some store in, in the middle of Mississippi or South Carolina is going to be like, whoa, that, that's a giant leap, you know. And there's a lot of people who own homes and apartments in my area, you know, or, or renting, and they're only around like $13, $14 an hour even. But you take that to New York, California, and the cost of living is so high, that might not even be scratching the surface. So I feel like, you know, the, the federal government, in my opinion, right, right. And I look at it as, you know, the federal government has gotten involved in the past to, you know, make seatbelts mandatory. They didn't pass it at Washington, D.C., but they put the pressure on the states to pass this law, we give you funding, we want this safety. So they, they kind of put their weight on the states, but the states did it themselves. And so to me, I think when we're talking minimum wage, this, you know, there, there should be pressure there so that states have a livable wage. But I think it needs to be determined on what is the cost of living in that state. And I think a blanket thing that goes, you know, coast to coast has definitely some, some flaws there in it. 
Um, so I, I completely agree with you. The federal government has got way too much power. Yeah, because I've, I've lived in all sorts of places. I've lived in the middle of nowhere rural Michigan where there's one gas station and it's run by, like, they have one employee and they get maybe five customers a day. It's right. Like, well, they probably can't afford, like, a fin- Fifteen dollar minimum wage, but then you go to places like you know Chicago. Infamously, they raise their minimum wage and then simultaneously increase their taxes right after they pass their minimum wage increase. So essentially, you were paid the same. It just looked like you were making more money. So you right. had a lot of things, things like that, and de- definitely just to where almost all of these solutions that people offer, like I like the idea of a lot of them, but they they don't. The thing I try to express to people is they don't understand that America expands. A, an entire continent the united states is an entire continent we have like 17 different cultures we have every single biome like these these ideas that we can just take one concept or one system and just drop it and dump it all over everybody and it won't cause mayhem and chaos i just don't like and a lot of people get confused by that and i'm like well i, I told you i'm an anarchist like you know <laughs> i don't I, I don't i don't want a government at all so a lot of people will come to me and be like oh you don't support like medicare for all or blah 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 and it's like no because that's a government I'm, I'm, I'm oppositional to government i want you know local communities to handle these things i don't want this giant you know i guess i guess the the quote i always use is is whoever whoever has control of your life better be within like a five minute drive or slapping distance you know <laughs> not not a not a five not a five hour plane trip you know and, 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 and i like a perfect example of like in 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 lansing like they're having a big issue with police it's brutality, and so like the protesters just show up to the mayor's house, you yeah. know, and they just complain outside the mayor's house all the time. To where like if I have a pro- problem with bombing in Iraq, I have to go all the way to D.C. to you know protest right. that where it's at. Right. At. Yeah, and, and you bring up a couple of good points there. I, I want to kind of hit on real quick, and I, and I, and you know I notice you've got an interesting piece there in the background. I'm a, I'm a big Second Amendment guy myself. Um, some people disagree with me on that, but but I, I'm I'm very pro gun. But you know I, I've heard argument, and I heard Jimmy Dore make this argument, and I'm still a big fan of Jimmy Dore. But his, his kind of argument against the Second Amendment was that some people say that they don't want the rights infringed upon. And he points toward what's taking place with our Fourth Amendment, for example, right? And, and definitely the recent things with the First Amendment. But see, I, I'm not oblivious to what's taking place with that. I understand, you know, the things that Edward Snowden revealed, how our Fourth Amendment was being completely violated. And, and I'm, you know, paying attention to a lot of things going on right now with our First Amendment being trampled on. And me personally, I want to see all of those things be, be restored to our country. But... This idea of government protecting us, the, the whole reason our Fourth Amendment was ever trampled on by the NSA to catch the terrorists, well, it seems like the data shows that didn't really protect anything. You know what I mean? They, they, they didn't really stop a single thing. Yeah, they were how, only how many, spying. How many, years, how many years have we had the TSA and they haven't stopped like a single terrorist attack, I think was the last statistic? Right. I mean, like, you know, gr- groping people. Uh, groping people. People at the airport and going through all your things, and, and people still manage to get like bombs and stuff on planes. Right, right, right. I mean, it's it, it's definitely not getting the job done. And, and you, when you talk about you don't like government, you know, I I like the concept of the Medicare for all, the single payer plus, uh, even a UBI. But this is where, unlike some people, while I would like to see it, I don't have the faith. And our government, especially as it's constituted right now, that they could put any of these things in place and run them properly. And if you need evidence of that, I would point you towards Social Security. You know, going all the way back to Lyndon Baines Johnson, this was supposed to be something people had for their retirement. And then because they had to fund Vietnam, they started taking money out and putting IOUs in. Now it's become a Ponzi scheme where everyone who's paying taxes now is subsidizing the people who paid taxes years prior so they can collect their money. Anything I'm putting into this system right now isn't even being used for me. You know, so, and and, and yeah, people I, have I've looked at it. Like, yeah, I've, I've long said that, like, probably probably maybe your generation, but definitely not, you know, my generation. We're not seeing a Social Security. But right, now. It's, it's going to be, that's going to be dried up. I, I, 
by the time 17 year olds turn 70 there probably won't be social security now that's <laughs> that's that's an interesting point that that, that that you brought up there like like with my generation i'm not sure uh w- w- which generation you fall under are, are you were you you than the millennial I, I don't think you're you're gen z are you i i think i technically think i'm like right on the cusp i'm 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 on like the cusp of Gen Z. I think I'm like one year above Gen Z. So I'm in I'm in like kind of the middle ground. 95, 96. Uh no. No, I was born 93. Okay, so see, this is one that actually surprises a lot of people. Um is I I'm actually 96 and not not a lot of people realize that about me. So, you know, Oh um, shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, my apologies, my friend. <laughs> You just have, you just no, have, you, don't 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 get me wrong. A lot of testosterone voice, so I just assume you're older than me. <laughs> I, I I've been given that a lot. It's got to the point of me, me, my wife, and my mother-in-law went bowling, and the, there's a bartender at the bowling alley who's got a huge crush on my mother-in-law, and she's in her fifties, by the way. Okay, but you know he he saw us all bowling together. We went up and ordered two beers, and then when she went back, he thought I was her boyfriend. So I, I I I get that a lot. So you're you're not the only one. A lot a lot of people a lot of people like look at me and then they hear my voice and they don't think they match up. Like a lot there's a lot of conspiracy in like Nico House and and Convo House, which is comment sections of being like that wasn't the guy that gave the speech to the Capitol. <laughs> like, and I've like I've shown my I've shown my plate carrier my hoodie like everything matches, but like his voice is more soy than the guy who was you know, speaking. Uh-huh. I was like, Shut the secretly working for the yeah, fed. No, like, I guess, <laughs> right? Yeah, I've, I've been called a federal agent many times, especially by oh, the Alex man. Jones yeah. fans after going on there twice. But uh, you, you gotta I guess, love I guess it, to but... like our, our, you know, our original point, we were saying it's just like I would have. It's not even that I don't, I don't have faith in the government. I don't have faith in the people to keep it in check because, yes. like, you want to take the, you want to take the system that already exists, whether it be like the minimum wage, whether it be like public education or Medicaid or any of these things, they have a bunch of problems. And a lot of people can't even bring up those problems or offer solutions to those problems without being viewed as attacking them. And then you have like weird hero worship of politicians like AOC and stuff like that, where you can't criticize them to where if I just saw uh, like if there was a whole bunch of, you know, Medicare for all people that are very like for that, like viciously attacking any like, you know, screw up or flaw or like any corruption in the medical system and like calling it out and not being afraid to like point out the issues and not being afraid to kind of like scrap the idea and start over. Cause there's definitely like, like all, all these welfare programs and everything we're, we're living off of now were all like created in like the sixties and seventies and had very little updates to how they work. And they're very old. And yet nobody's talking about like, Hey, let's try a whole new system. Let's let's revamp this. Let's reboot this, not get rid of the whole idea, not, you know, abolish it or whatever, but let's try a different, path you know like like you would do in anything else you know if you're building a chair and, and it keeps you know breaking every time you sit in it you don't just like keep adding wood to the chair eventually you try to make a new one yeah. so if i saw like that kind of fervor and determination to keep the keep these programs in check just as much as i see so much fervor to expand them then i'd be less hesitant but i'm just worried that we'll get medicare for all and then there'll be like a whole like a huge corruption scandal and then i'd be on a show talking about hey hey there's a bunch of corruption in medicare for all and people would attack me and be like, oh, you're just a conservative that wants you know people to die. And it's like, no, <laughs> like there's a problem. We should like you should be with me with fixing the problem, you know. So that's kind of my hesitation on all of it. And if I see that change, then like I might be my opinion may be different. But I definitely want to see more cleaning the skeletons out of the closet now before just getting a bigger closet. Uh, you know, and, and I, I, you bring up a real good point there. And, and I actually brought this up the last time I was on uh, the show, Frank Analysis. Um, you know, we, we were kind of debating what would be the best economic strategy, for example. And I and I heard the argument that we need socialism on the path to the true communism, as they were describing it. And it was basically where the, all the people share it and, and, and the profits of everything. It was, I think it was kind of like the, the Caleb uh, Maupin arg- argument, right? So, and, and hearing the argument for it, it makes sense in a lot of ways that like the Medicare for all makes sense. But what you just brought up is a very good point. And that is, can the people keep these things in check to make sure that it's done properly? I I think that implies that there is this, you know, constitution of a rhino in every single person within our country to make sure that they're doing their, their just part. I don't see evidence of that. I think for us to get to that point, you're talking about a societal reform 
of our own mind and how we think that, that he, if you think electing third parties is going to be hard, try getting everyone to change how they think to that level to run that properly. You know, I, I think that's going to be arguably even right. harder. It's, it's so yeah, it, it's, it's so important because, like, uh, awareness and the desire to check corruption is fundamental to literally anyone's pet system. I don't care if you're an anarchist. I don't care. Absolutely. If you're a communist, I don't care if you're a monarchist or a, a constitutionalist or, or a right wing Republican, like whatever your system and how you think the country would operate best under, you have to be vicious in attacking your own side and keeping your own side accountable and policing your own programs to make it work. And so many people, whether regardless of their political persuasion, seem to just think that like, oh, we'll just vote it in and then it'll ride and it'll be great. Or that anyone who has critiques of their system or even wants to kind of problem solve to make their own idea better is some vicious opponent trying to destroy it instead of trying to reform it. And right. until we kind of move past that mentally, I don't see anything really working out. Really, even even anarchy, like I'm saying it as an anarchist, like anarchy will not work until people get to that level of, of, of awareness to solve these problems. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely, people are going to have to wake up, you, you know, and, and the evidence that I gave to some people is I said, look, if everyone had that much common sense right now, we wouldn't keep electing the Democrats and Republicans. Who, who would continue to go out and vote for their problem if they already could see that clearly? You know, that to me, that just doesn't add up. They got, they got this, they got this, sorry, they, no. they got this whole idea too, which I feel like is the, the most debunked idea in America, and I get really sick of when people bring it up is they're like we just need to get more engagement you know half the country right. doesn't vote and if we just get them to vote then we'll win to where i'm sitting here i'm like i guarantee if you had 100 percent voter participation the elections would almost be exactly the same because you're assuming that just because someone doesn't vote means that they're on your team or that they're smarter or that they're more educated or more informed where they're probably just it's probably going to be the same median of political persuasion and, and voting habits you get now under 50 percent vote or persuasion like uh, and it might absolutely. even be worse you know you might have people that are totally politically ignorant that just go out and vote all of a sudden yeah i mean yeah that, no that, 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 that's for. where you could so I, I, do, I don't i don't like that idea yeah and I, I mean it's uh, to, to to be fair some people might have had their reasons but i mean you got to consider it like this i mean at one point we had people who went out and voted for harambe you know what i mean so there, there, there's definitely people out there who don't take politics serious enough i've even heard arguments from people that you know i don't vote because it's a red state and i know it's going to go republican anyway and i'm a republican so i don't really need to go vote for them because i know they're going to win my state well you, you know so yeah there's a lot of those i mean how, how many how many californians in california go out to vote democrat why do they you know right. why they don't care they know it's going to go blue no matter what right right so <laughs> You, you, you've got to consider that in, but but to kind of wrap up on that before, before we move over to one, one good topic here, um, with, with the 2A thing, what we talked about with the government running everything, one quote that I like to give a lot of people, and it might not be word for word, but it's kind of, you, you know, it's kind of ad-libbed here, is the old Ben Franklin quote, and that is, if you would sacrifice your freedom for your safety, you shall lose them both and you'll deserve neither one of them. You know what I mean? You can't expect government to take care of you. You, you, you. At the end of the day, you have to do that for yourself. And and to me, that's why I'm such a big two A guy is because I am convinced it was put there for our own self protection. You know, um, and and I've heard a lot of the arguments against that say, well, we're always going to be outgunned. Well, you know, that might very well be. In our revolution, we were technically outgunned too. But it comes down to. You know, you, you are you willing to make the stand, and that's what it comes down to. Uh, yeah, that's 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 the argument I, I use on people all the time. Is they talk about all oh, the Second Amendment, blah blah blah. It will never work. It, they have drop bombs and drones and spy satellites and everything. And then I point out that the American military has been run around in circles in the desert for 16 years by mostly illiterate tribesmen who are using Soviet era weaponry and Toyota trucks, like. <laughs> Well, and, and like that, 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 that rifle is better than the standard issue rifle that is given to the average Marine. That is, that is more, that is newer. It is well, well maintained. It has better parts and equipment and on it. Like a lot of Americans are better equipped than the military. So like the, the whole idea that like, if, if they can't, if they can't beat, you know, some Afghan, you know, like, 
like herder in the mountains who's just like minding his own business and what makes anyone think that any government could take on the most armed country in the world full of like a bunch of hippies and, and moonshiners and stuff up in the mountains like i just i don't think they actually understand how war really works you know, no. Like, no. like no no and, and and you know you you bring up that good point we we've been getting ran around in the middle east by by, by what you described but you know i always like the analogy too that when 911 took place our multi-billion dollar air defense system was defeated by a couple of radicals with box cutters. When, when you think about that, how when, when, when that attack carried out, they refused to take the planes down and these planes were hijacked and rammed into all these buildings by people who only had a box cutter. You know what I mean? So w w w without a doubt... They don't understand that just like... They don't understand that like a like hundred people with some commercial Tannerite that you can buy like from from like hardware stores and stuff could run around this country and take down the whole power grid if they really felt like it. Like there, there's nothing Absolutely. stopping them. There's no security for it. There's nothing stopping a bunch of Americans from just blowing a bunch of fuse boxes and power generators and knocking out everything in this entire country. It doesn't happen because people aren't like that. <laughs> you know, like, you right. know? like they're, 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 there's, there's no interest from the American people to, to do that. And it's the kind of the same thing with guns of like, I hear so many arguments that people like, they're really confusing for people where they're like, Oh, we don't want people the privately owned tanks and like people already own tanks you just don't know yeah and you don't see people driving tanks around and blowing up buildings and stuff because nobody wants to do that like no. pe people own pri private like anti-aircraft guns that shoot 40 millimeter shells you don't hear about like mass shootings with anti-aircraft guns because nobody wants to do that Absolutely. <laughs> but that's gonna yeah, that, yeah uh, and then yeah we're kind of getting close to when i gotta yeah get, jump out of here though so the the, 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 the yeah, one, one last topic just to see what you thought on this. So, you know, I kind of mentioned this to you before we came on the show here. Um, recent days, multiple YouTube channels have been completely demonetized. And what you talked about with, with the unity, you know, um, I, I understand mainstream media has definitely made a lot of smears, for example, about the Boogaloo Boys, right? They want to paint this narrative about what you guys are supposed to be because of the actions of perhaps a few who claim to be within your group. So they're saying the same thing about a lot of these YouTube channels. They're promoting, you know, false stuff because they talked about what might have taken place with the election or something, right? Uh, but Frank Analysis, Nico House of Mikasa Sukasa, The Convo Couch, Graham Elwood. I mean, we're, we're, we're going on down the list here. People are being targeted, and my take is they're trying to smear them. They're trying to shut them down. They think if they can hit the money first, they'll give up what they're doing. And if that doesn't work... Eventually, I say the next attack is going to be they're just probably going to shut the YouTube channel down. What do you think about what's taking place, and where do you see similarities between them and the Boogaloo Boys smear? Yeah, so so they're probably going to just totally shut. Like they're they're going to. I'm pretty sure all of them are probably already on some blacklist, or they're being you know filtered or funneled out, and their subscribers aren't actually seeing their videos. But uh, it's it's not even just YouTube. I, I posted on my Twitter the other day to where uh, there was a very prominent uh, anti-fascist organization in Michigan that had their Facebook censored the other day. The post that that caused their Facebook to get censored looks nothing different than what they've been posting all four years of Trump, besides one difference. It mentioned off uh, reaching out and working with ex-Trump supporters. And boom, immediately, page flag. And you see people like Nico talking about, and you know, Jimmy Dore and the combo couch and everything. The moment people started talking about like, hey, Hey, should we all band together? Suddenly, just mass demonetization, mass, you know, people getting their channels taken down, pages getting flagged, Twitter's getting deleted. And it seems to be like it, it, they, now that the Democrats are in power, they're going after any left wing people that will be critical of them. And they're going after any organization or group that wants to work across party lines and just remove and silence that voice immediately. And that was definitely, I think, like the Boogaloo Boys were kind of the canary in the coal mine with that because we were an armed militia group marching with blm we you know had crossed the party lines so we were destroyed off of twitter we were destroyed off of facebook we we're destroyed off of youtube you know all of our instagram pages got taken down like say, very similar thing that happened to donald trump happened to us all the way back you know six months ago of just mass purge off the entire internet right so i definitely see that more things are coming like that and that stuff like that's going to start happening to any fascist organizations they're going to start to happen to blm groups that aren't friendly to the dnc and they're just going to continue to purge people Absolutely. 
Well, Magnus, I know you got to run. It's been a been a very fun conversation. I definitely want to bring you back on, perhaps talk about a few more subjects. But uh, I'm going to give you the final word real quick. Tell us, uh, tell us what you think we need to be doing as a country. Uh, g g g give us your thoughts, man. What do we need to do from here on out going forward? Yeah, become more self-reliant and withdraw your consent from the government. Uh, stop, stop buying from these corporations. Stop participating in their system. Stop following following their laws, you know, start advocating in, in your communities to become more community oriented, you know, and obviously on bigger things, uh, a general strike, a tax strike, a rent strike, a mortgage strike, just start with drawing your consent from the system. You need to make them scream in, in pain from you to per, no longer participating in their nonsense. I think that's the best path that everybody can get on and move forward of just kind of, we don't have to fight them. We just have to walk away from them. I agree. I completely agree. Well, Magnus, I hope you'll come back on at some point down the line. I know you got to run, brother. It's been fun having you on. Have a good day, man. I appreciate it, man. You have a good one. You too. So I hope everyone enjoyed that interview. Uh, I thought it was a good breath of fresh air. I've been looking forward to talking to him uh, ever since I found his clip. Uh, once I saw him go on the Jimmy Dore show and I listened to him, I think he's definitely got the right idea in mind. Um, he, he's got an open mind to talking to people, and that's a, a lot of what we need in this country today. We don't need so much left versus right, conservative versus progressive. We need people to sit down that are willing to talk to each other in this country. You would be surprised just how much blue-collar America, working class, you know, uh, uh, of every race, religion, what we could all agree upon about the things that really affect us at the end of the day the jobs uh, you know issues with the economy issues with you know pharma issues with our government issues with our foreign policy there's so many things we could talk about that we are going to find common ground on the key is just being able to talk to people it's just being able to talk to people because as we mentioned too many people are being conditioned right now to not talk it's bicker and fight and that's one thing that independents or anyone who wants to see someone besides Democrats and Republicans are going to have to come to an understanding on. If you want that change, you're going to have to be willing to not sit around and bicker and fight with other people who want that change. We've got to find common ground. We've got to meet on that common ground. We've got to work together on that common ground. And then we've got to take our country back. And once you do that, and once that's done... Once we vote all these Democrats and Republicans out of office, once we pass legislation that gives power back to the people, then, then we can split our hairs and figure out where our differences are and debate those out. And we'll do it, hopefully, in a better manner than the Democrats and Republicans are doing right now. So I really hope to have Magnus back on soon. I, I really like a lot of the things I heard in. We didn't really get a chance to go too deep into certain subjects. So I really want to kind of pick his brain a little bit more, maybe discuss a few other topics. And by the time I'm able to have him back on, I'm sure there'll be even more topics in the news. Uh, 2021 is certainly starting off, you know, uh, a complete doozy. So I'm looking forward to having him back on and we'll see you next time on the Lone Wolf Podcast.